Good morning, everyone. This is Jenny from Cricklewood Crossing. Well, how's everyone coping in these crazy times? I guess if you've been watching my videos from my last one, you know it's been a difficult time for me, but I'm going to be positive and I'm hoping that everything's going to be on the up and up going from here forward. Um, I have not been on, I haven't had a video, I guess, or been visiting with you for properly like this, like a proper floss tube for quite a while, actually. Um, there's been a lot of uh, difficult times, uh, losing my loved ones and a lot of stress, and I just couldn't really do it. And I didn't really had, I haven't really stitched much, so I've been putting it on hold, but I just really missed everyone. And I kind of thought, well, it's about time that I, I did one. As you can see, I'm in a different little area. Um, we don't have much room, really. <laughs> in this apartment it's quite small and so for me to move from one area to another it's just like a few feet <laughs> but I kind of thought it would look pretty with all the all the new thread here I have for my embroidery machine and all my house plants hanging here in the window so I just thought I'd change it up I'm sitting in a, on a stool <laughs> so I don't know how hard that is going to be on my my bottom <laughs> but we'll see how it goes anyway um well the first thing I'd start off with is uh, today, I would have been on a plane flying to Ohio <laughs> to go to StitchCon. Um, and I was really looking forward to that, um, meeting a lot of new people and, and making a lot of new Stitchy friends. But um, I totally understand what's going on with this pandemic and, and stuff that's happening in the world at the moment. I'm now just really excited to look forward to it for next season. No, next season, next year, I should say. I'm just... <laughs> What put me off right then, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I have a new little kitty, or my daughter has a new little kitty. <laughs> here he is right here, and he was just sitting on the couch right next to me, and he was just about ready to jump up on my leg. I was kind of waiting for it. I was like, oh, go like this. If you saw all of our pants, we've all got these little threads for, um, pulled in them. So he had his little claws little clipped. Um, he's a sweetheart but he gets a little bit feisty when he wants to play and then when he wants to sleep you couldn't wake him for anything but his name's Jumanji we got him like that we saved him from an animal shelter um, he's a sweetie and he kind of makes my days um, a lot more easier since I have to stay home during this time um, but if you see me kind of jump every now and then or look away to the side I'm waiting for a pounce <laughs> so I'll just put him down now you go sit over there and be nice so I can talk to these wonderful ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, he's a sweetie. Um, isn't it funny how pets can just kind of bring a lot of smile to your face? Anyway, <laughs> he's gone for my feet now. Anyway, um, so let's get started. I had posted a few videos that I had planted some stuff outside you know, on our little patio, some things that I was growing. So I thought I might at the end post a little um, uh, video of how much they've grown and you can see what I, how, how much they've grown and, and stuff like that. Also, after Mother's Day, it was really busy at my job at the garden nursery right up until Mother's Day. And then after Mother's Day, it um, slowed right down. I mean, really right down. And um, I'm pretty much the one that gets paid the most. I'm just gonna fix something right here. <laughs> I pretty pretty much the one that gets paid the most on the staff amount on it, and so uh, all of our hours were cut, and mine was cut back to one day a week. And so basically, I talked to my boss, and we've got a great relationship, so that's that that was fine. And I have left for the season, so I'm just working from home. Um, well, up until then, I had made twenty masks <laughs> for the staff at the garden nursery, so I was sewing away with that, and, and I got some money from that, and um, also I just made some masks for my family. Um, it was funny because from my, I'll just tell you a little story from my uh, little country town where I was born in Port Pirie, South Australia. My grandfather, um, my, so my my mother's father, um, there was a big smeltering works where my husband worked. Um, but my grandfather worked there back in the early 1900s. And when they first started out, they never had any respirators. 
Um, and it, and so my grandfather actually was one of the the, the first men that brought um, or designed respirators for the men uh, at this smeltering company. And it's funny how, and they have just started a new, uh, what do you call it, a post or well, where you follow, everyone follows from my town and, and they're showing all, a whole bunch of old photos and I have a whole bunch of them and I've been posting that um, on Facebook and it's just funny how I posted the other day, I posted some pictures of, you know, respirators and the smelters um, and stuff like that and here they are, you know, here I am years later making masks to be able to breathe properly for my family over here. How things change, doesn't it? Um, so that's just a little, little thing I thought you might be interested in. <laughs> um, back then, my grandfather got paid a hundred dollars <laughs> for producing these respira respirators. Now it probably would have been thousands or millions. <laughs> um, and my grandmother was quite upset that he only took uh, that small amount <laughs> for it. But my grandfather had such a big heart and he was a beautiful man. Anyway, so after at the end, I will maybe post a little video on the garden and let you know how it's going out there um as you can tell by those that follow me on instagram as well um so since i haven't been not working at, at my job at the garden nursery i've been making bags and needle minders and just trying to come out up with a few things new for my etsy shop that's under cricklewood crossing and i've been uh i've had a new sewing machine an embroidery sewing machine on layaway we should say lay by do we say lay by here and lay away there i can't remember which way it goes <laughs> i always do that i can never remember which way if which way we say it in australia which way you say it here <laughs> but anyway i had it put on hold <laughs> um since october before my mum died um and so since a lot of money was paid out to go back for her funeral i hadn't picked it up and so i'd been i picked it up a month ago or so and this is what all these threads were and I've been just doing some little fun things um, with my bags and stuff like that but I just love all the colors right here I love colors I love fiber I love fabric I've always loved that um, ever since I had my my quilting business but so I've been working on those things mostly you know for my not having a job I've just been staying at home I to make it a lot easier I had we have a couple of cars of course my husband has a car and i have a car and my daughter works for the master dealer here she's the office manager and so we're really lucky we get really quite great deals on cars and uh, my payment was kind of was for me it was kind of high it was like 300 dollars a month and so it's probably not really high but <laughs> um i decided that because i wasn't working that i would trade it trade it down or we'll trade it up <laughs> whatever you say and so I went from a 2016 to a 2013 Mazda CX-5 now I don't think it's a trade down because I think it's a beautiful white little car and I'm really enjoying it and it is um a hundred dollars cheaper a month so it makes it easier for when I'm at home and it's not you know not so tough with us um trying to pay two lots of cars and then my husband just said his work van broke down <laughs> this morning so he's looking at getting another van through my my daughter's um job as well they are fantastic to us so you know what do they call them a necessity that you need but sometimes don't necessarily want to pay for do we but uh yes i love my little new semi-new <laughs> cx5 so those are the things that I've just been doing. I've been staying home. Um, if you watched my last video, I got quite sick at the beginning of, or at the end of February, the beginning of March at my job. I was potting up roses and our bare root, like bare root roses and our shrubs, and I breathed in some potting mix and got quite sick. Um, and I couldn't breathe properly. Went to the emergency room, tested me for COVID, don't have COVID, tested my lungs. My lungs were kind of struggling but uh, not too bad so um i had like i think it was like five or six weeks off work and uh so i stayed at home like everyone else and it was nice because i was kind of a bit nervous and a bit scared that i wouldn't be able to breathe and if i got covid most likely something drastic might happen so i was glad to kind of stay home and so when my job finished just recently i'm still glad to stay home <laughs> 
I'm a really people person. I love going out and do things, but you know, I just, at the moment, I'm just enjoying watching all different types of floss tubes uh, and new ones and my, ones that I follow all the time. And also I've also got, a, got onto some gardening ones and some knitting and crochet ones. And I'll show you a few things that I'm thinking about or have been doing as well since I've been home. And I, um, so I have a, a quite a, a wider range of neat floss or not, neat videos that I watch or YouTubes that I watch now. And so I've been home and, and we got our little kitty and he's been keeping me company. So I decided I would clean up some things like, you know, we go through all of our patterns and all of our fabrics and supplies. And like I said, in this little place, we don't have a lot, a lot of places to store it. So I, um, kind of went through and decided to clean up a lot of things and when I was going through um, my my cross stitching fabric and my patterns I was like I am not buying anything else for the rest of the year <laughs> when I do supplies for my, my little business I don't get a chance to stitch a lot and I was thinking I will never and I, I have heard so many people say this I will never ever oh Someone, sorry, someone's messaging me again. I will never, ever <laughs> get a chance to st stitch all these in my life. And I have some that were finished, or, you know, that I'd been working on. And I just want to get them done and finished and up in, in, in our house. And I have been gifted some beautiful ones. And I have so many of the leisure art books that I love Santas. You know I love Santas. And there's so many that I want to do. Of, um had some that are just in my stash and I was thinking, okay, at least for the rest of the year, maybe part of next year before I get to go away to StitchCon and then I'll have a big spend up at StitchCon. <laughs> so watch out, keep, stay, keep saying, Jenny's is coming to have a big spend up next year, but up until then, I think I might need to be um, a little bit better <laughs> in, in spending so much on some, on patterns and stuff. Oh my gosh, there's so many beautiful ones out there and you know, I have been designing some myself and I've been designing for inside my mystery boxes. So I have been cross-stitching, just not um, on my, I've been doing them on my own personal stuff, not on other people's designs. Um, so I just thought, I just got to be good and get some of these done and use up some of this fabric. Um, my husband and I, maybe next year or the year after, we've been talking about going in this RV. Um, but since everything that's happened with my family and my father at the moment, who's still in hospital after having a mild heart attack, we're thinking maybe, we're not sure yet, of maybe looking for a little block of land, getting our RV, putting it on, on the RV, living in there for two years, saving some money, and then when we go for our RV travels, when we come back, then looking at building a little two bedroom home or something on the land. So this is kind of where we've changed a little bit. Not much, we still wanna go away, but the little shift right there, we'll see what happens. Might not happen, we might find a, might buy an RV and find an RV park and live in that for two years. I don't know yet, but um, I just miss having um, some stuff to grow things in, I guess. And that's what I would get really, not anxious, but really, I miss, I miss the most. I miss my farm a huge amount especially in these times when, you know, everyone's so around and everything's going on with this COVID. I miss having the, no one around me on the farm and just going out and picking everything that I can eat and not have to worry about going to the supermarket. I miss it a lot. People have asked me, do I miss it? And I, at first I was like, no, but during this time, this year, I do miss it. <laughs> Maybe not next year or if it gets things get a lot better for us. Um, right now, I miss it, yeah, I do. Anyway, so I was, I, I've got a little few things down here. Oh, <laughs> gotta tell you, I went to get new glasses and I got just one pair to start with because you get the second pair half price. And so I decided to get a pair of sunglasses. So my sunglasses, I just need it for distance and my regular glasses, I need it just for reading in the computer. And I go to pick them up and my sunglasses were perfect. <laughs> go to read on my regular ones and they've done both of them for distance so i'm still wearing these cheap little ones that you get like you know in um, a pharmacy or something like that and i i can't see them and i decided that i'm not going to get these little you know those little ones that's got the little plastic that i get them all molded because they when i put them up here like oh i've got another <laughs> got another pair on my head when i got them like this i get the ones that are 
like just all molded in. But um, I'll definitely need to look at them right now. I'll leave these up there. So anyway, I am excited that it's summer already. <laughs> I'm a real summer girl. Um, coming from a place where it's quite warm in South Australia. I love being able to go out or, you know, even now that when uh, the area where we are up in Utah here has opened up, my husband and I can go for bike rides and be quite safe, really. Um, and even my husband and I will just go get in our car and drive around and maybe look for a little piece of land. Or the other day we actually hopped in the car. It was amazing. I had never done it. I've been here four years. And we hopped in the car and we drove all the way around the lake. There's a Utah lake. So one side of us is the mountain range and the other side is the other side is the lake and we're right in the middle. And we had never been all the way around this lake. And we did it for the first time and stopped off and got ourselves an ice cream at Mavericks. <laughs> and a drink and we just had such a fun time and it's so different on the other side little country towns hardly any you know population and so we had a great time so i just love summer to be able to go out and 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 do that and um you know love being out and seeing the flowers and the trees and everything can blossom and bloom so i love summer so basically i'm just going to quickly show you what I have been stitching on. I haven't been stitching on much. I had posted some things on um, my Instagram and I have been stitching on these forever. Now I posted them um, on my Instagram and stitching on the housewives and these have taken me forever to do. So these are my little patriarch. I've got one that's in my queue snap and I'm not gonna take out now because these are the back stitching times <laughs> and I don't mind back stitching. Um, do most of you go to stitch, sometimes I've stitched with two threads and sometimes I've only stitched with one. So what do you guys like the most? Um, I haven't, I've got him in the queue snap and I haven't started back stitching him yet. So I'm not sure if I should do one or two uh, threads on them because they're only quite small. When you see them, they, you think they're big, but they're only supposed to be ornaments. So here's my hand. So it's only small, there's only kind of small, these Santas, and they take forever the work on these things take me forever and so there was three of them so there's the two and i have the other one that's in the the q snap and um so i had someone ask me on my instagram or it might have even been on stitching with the housewives what was i going to do with them and i have another one that is going to be in a big frame kind of like can you see you can see that santa there yeah you can right here he's probably a little bit bigger than this um, and he's a patriotic one. And so what I'd like to do is I like to have him framed up. I've done his head, his head's done. <laughs> um, I like to have him framed up and then have these three, I'll make him into really cute patriotic cushions and have them sitting in like a little basket underneath the, the big one when I finish them. So I had, had started these during Stitch Mania last, last year in 2019 and I never did stitch mania this year because of everything that's got was going on and me not feeling well and everything and I hadn't even finished stitching some of the ones from last year so that's what I did I grabbed the box for the ones that I had out last year and I thought I'm just gonna try and get these finished made up framed pillows whatever I need to do and what the first three that I picked out were the Santas there was another one trying to message me sorry guys um yeah, so these are the three that I love. Now, I've, I've had many people ask me, where do I get them from? If you see any Santas that are like this, they're all mostly, a lot of the times, um, either from Lavender, Lavender and Lace, and I have like three, two or three of those that I want to get done, um, or they're from the Leisure Art Books. And I have, if you can see these bookshelves here, I have a whole cube full of the Leisure Art ones. And I've gone through and I've picked out the ones that I want to really do. I think there might be one or two in each book that I really, really want to stitch before the end of my world. <laughs> before the end of my life, I should say. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's what I've done. I've kind of been really picky at what I want to stitch and what I really want to have around. Now, I think I do a lot of Christmas because... Um, Christmas is my favourite holiday and I actually stitch, um, I actually decorate, I should say, a lot at Christmas time more than any time of the year. Because I have, as you come in our little apartment, 
I have a little 4th of July or patriotic, sorry, wall right there that when I make something, I put it up. So that's up all the time. And as you can see by my house, I have not a lot of wall space. So I have a lot of plants, <laughs> a lot of my house plants around. I have like, I counted the other day and I got 30. <laughs> and I bought a little tiny one to go into, a, to finish filling up a little hole in this pot I have over here. And I was like, and that's the last one I got before, from my job before I left. And I thought, that's it. No more. I'm done. I can't have any more in this house because I can't fit them anywhere. So, um, so I love my plants. So I basically have my patriotic wall. I could probably fit a few more up my hallway and in my bedroom. I have a few pictures of, quite a few pictures of my family and pictures of Christ around and some things that just um, have touched me, like, you know, that are um, personal to me. And also um, a few cross stitches that I saved or I have finished or someone has given to me. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to finish up the ones that I've started and then I'm going to move on to the ones that people have given me or other things like that out of my stash already. So those Santas are now being backstitched. Um, and if you need to know where they are, they're in the Leisure Art books. It's actually called, that. those ones spe specifically are in down Santa Claus Lane. That's what that one's called. Now, some people were looking on Amazon and I looked on Amazon and they were trying to sell them for like anywhere from $10 to $17 a book. But if you go on eBay, you can get them anywhere from $5 and under, maybe $7 and under. I don't know how many's left because a lot of people saying that they had gone there and picked them up. So, but there was probably 20 or more when I had looked last. So I'm not sure how many's left. So that was the one of the things I've been stitching on. The only other thing that I've been stitching on, well actually, two things, no, three things. I've been stitching on this when you'd been guys have been following me when I was um, with my father in Australia and we would sit at night together and it was the little imaginating um, long one that I want to put above a door, which is this one here. And what's it called again? It's called Har Harvest Happiness. Now I have done, let me see, I have done Okay, part of this basket and up to this pumpkin. Now, when you last saw me, I never had the pear and the pumpkin. This on the back. I never had this pear done and the pumpkin. I've done part of the pumpkin. So I've done a little bit. So what, sometimes at night, I'll just think, oh, I'm gonna stitch tonight instead of making something for my business. So I just did this pear and this pumpkin. Moving along very slowly like me sometimes <laughs> these days but um yeah i really like that i love the fabric um i don't even i can't even remember it was from my stash and i can't even remember what fabric it was but um i know it's linen and it's i think it was 32 count and it's this like, like a little greeny color and i really like it against the pumpkin and the leaves and stuff like that so that was another one that i'd put a few stitches in let me just put that oh i wonder where those pair of scissors have gone so that's that one. And the only other one that um, I've been stitching on, and I can show you, show you these now because I, um, what am I trying to say? Oh, I, I have already <laughs> posted or mailed out my patriotic mystery boxes, which was the last one. So if you're just new following me, I should say welcome. Thank you for, follow, for for following me and welcome to my channel. And I'm grateful for those that keep on coming back to, to see my crazy little life. But um, what I've been producing in my little shop as well is uh, mystery boxes. Now I are producing six for the year. This first part of the year, I had three. So the first one was a cottage garden. The second one was a... Um, Mickey Mouse Disney and the third one was a patriotic and in each of these mystery boxes you do get a pattern that I design floss and fabric plus a whole range of different other little things that are patriotic or themed to that box and um, so I did a little patriotic cross stitch for everyone that had bought those uh, pa that patriotic box and so now it is available in my Etsy shop if you want to purchase it and um, this is what I had done it's really a cute little um patriotic one it's called brave 
It's got Home of the Brave, USA, 1776, with a little house and the bunting and the, just some um, Quaker motives and the flag up the top. So those that had purchased my patriotic box, this was the pattern that they had gotten inside of it. They had got the fabric and they had got the floss, which was um, classic colour works floss in it. And they were around it like a little star. <laughs> they were wrapped, the floss was wrapped around a little clay star that I had, stars that I had made for each colour. And so um, if you're interested in this little patriotic one, I thought it looked cute in this little frame that I had found from my my secondhand shop. I got it for like a dollar and I just thought it was really cute in that. And that goes up on my wall over there now. Um, but so if you're interested, that's now available in my Etsy shop. So that's what happens if you basically purchase any of my, my mystery boxes. Um, so there's the first three. And now I had a break for the month of May. Um, and now I'm starting the last three. Now you probably think it's pretty early for sorry another message pretty early for um halloween <laughs> my halloween box is now being released this saturday um at i think it what did i put on there 10 o'clock mountain standard time for us here that live in utah um we i go by mountain standard time so those that are interested if in my halloween box it's coming out on saturday what i normally do and i'll quickly give you a little bit of a rundown I normally have it in my Etsy shop because people have said, well, I can't find the other boxes because they are just limited amount and a limited time. So basically what I do is I put a, a, so much out. Most of the time it's around 30 because when I try, I hand make every item that I put in the, in the boxes. And so it takes me quite a while. And at the moment, uh, the last patriotic one took a little bit longer to get out because I was waiting for supplies because of the COVID. It took a lot little longer for me to get the supplies that I'd ordered previous for my boxes. <laughs> and so um, it wasn't too much longer, but I was grateful for those that were very patient with it. Um, and so, you know, I've already got quite a few Halloween supplies for the next one already, but I am waiting on, on a few stuff for that as well. But what normally happens now, like I said, I have had the three mystery boxes. Uh, I'll, mention, I'll mention that now. I've had the three first three mystery boxes. And then the last three that are starting, the next one is the Halloween, which will start on Saturday. Then after that, there will be a fall one. And then at the end of the, closer to the end of the year, it will be a Christmas one. And now why I'm bringing it out in June or the middle of June is because by the time I get it to you, um, then you'll have time to be able to stitch it up before Halloween. Before fall before Christmas and that's how I kind of uh, how I kind of worked it out uh, for me to make it not me so crazy to be able to get it done it'll probably be easier now that I'm not working as well so hopefully it'll it won't be so hard for me to um, you know get the boxes out faster and I can work on them quicker um, you get it probably about sometimes anywhere from 10 to 12 items in the box and like I said they're all handmade and cross stitching or cross stitching related most of the time sometimes they could be some fabric to do finishing items and you know finishing products and stuff like that in there so um if you're interested in them keep a look out on on um saturday because like i said they're a limited amount and um, i only have them in my etsy shop for two weeks so what i do is i normally give it four to six weeks for a delivery because the first two weeks i have it in the shop and I'm, I've already, I'm already started designing the, the Halloween pattern. But, um, so what I do is I um, wait for those two weeks to pass so I see how many boxes I have to make. Because if I keep it going the whole time, I have people keep on bringing them in and sometimes I've already finished making, you know, the 20, 30 or whatever, you know, whatever it is for the, um, for the one item, you know, for an item that I'm working on, and then I have to go back and remake it again. So I just have it out there for two weeks, and then I start making it and and getting it out to everybody. Um, also, so I'll let those that normally follow me know what's going on as well with this, or if you want to be interested for the last three. So for the first three um, boxes, the the people that purchased the first three boxes, um, it doesn't matter if you purchased one or the whole three. Um, uh, I'm just trying to work out. I will do it probably 
next week, the beginning of next week, I I was gonna, I forgot to write it down, but I will announce the winner. So what happens if you had purchased one box or if you had purchased the, you know, three boxes or two of the three or whatever like that, you go in for a draw to win a $30 gift card. Um, and the, these gift cards that I am giving out for those Back to those who have helped purchase my boxes are helping um, my LNS shops here in uh, Utah. So basically, I we have I have well, everyone knows one two three stitch. <laughs> They're here in Utah, and I don't really think that they need so much of a help. <laughs> They're always crazily busy um, and stuff like that. But I like to help support my our brick and mortar LN, L, LNSs, and so. I, we have a Shepherd's Bush, we have Stitchery Express, and we have Craft Center of Fine Stitchery. So what I'm doing is I am buying these gift cards, one from each of these shops to be able to um, help them, you know, during this time as well. So if you've purchased one of these boxes, next week, keep a little look out. I'll do a little video and I'll announce it on my Inst Instagram as well, who the winner is for the $30 first gift card for, for purchasing one of the three boxes at the beginning of the year. Now that we've got the three boxes for the end of the year coming up, um, when the three boxes are finished, I will do a drawing. Um, if you purchase one or three of them, okay, you will be in the drawer for another $30 gift card for one of the brick and mortar stores here in Utah. And um, and so that'll, that'll be then after that. Now, if I have had quite a few ladies uh, purchase every box so far. So if you continue purchasing every box, at the end of the whole six boxes, there will be another gift card from one of the brick and mortar stores and it will be a very nice one for you guys to be able to um, buy whatever your heart wants <laughs> at one of these stores. Um, so that's my mystery boxes. I wasn't going to announce that till the end, but we kind of had a flow with what I was stitching on with my, my brave pattern. So I just kind of went from there. So that's what I have been stitching on. Now, let me just look at my little notes. The thing that if you, if you guys are following me on Instagram too, I have got, in, got into knitting and crocheting again. I used to do a little bit of it and made a few um, like baby's blankets and stuff like that or... I even made some of these slippers and I've been making some of these slip like knitted slippers that are so comfortable that my mother-in-law got the pattern from a lady sitting, they were both sitting in a doctor's office in New York City 30 years ago. I think it was New York City, um, 30 years ago. And this lady was knitting these slippers and my mother-in-law asked for the, the pattern and she gave it to her. And my mother-in-law has been knitting these slippers for all that time. I was just talking to her last week and she said, I just made five for the new grandkids. And so I had knitted a few, quite a few years back. And just when I wasn't feeling really well to be sitting there stitching, just sitting in front of the TV with a husband and knitting, um, I'll just go get it. Hold on one second. Let me, just give me a second. It's my little knitting bag at the moment. And I'll show you what it looks like. It just uses two colors, just basic garter stitch. Now I'm making this one for my hubby because his favorite color is yellow and the other color looks like a military color and because he was in the military. But this is what I'm, oh, I've been stitching just at night sometime. Doesn't help when I've got a little kitty on my lap and it's trying to play with the wall all the time. I get my daughter to take him in, into a bedroom when she's in a bedroom with him just so I can have a bit of a break. But let me just show you. So this is what I've been knitting for. I'm going to knit, I've bought colors for every one of my fam members in my family. So my husband, myself, my daughter, and my two boys and their partners. And I'm gonna knit these and we've had them before. Now I've got some up there that's got holes in the bottom because I used to wear them outside on the farm. And <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to just wear them inside. <laughs> but my husband is so excited because these are his favorite slippers. He grew up with them when he was a little boy and his mother used to make them for him. Now they are so thick. I mean, have a look. <laughs> so that's the back. And there's a special way that you get that pattern, but this is what it looks like when you have them on the outside of your foot. So you'd put your foot in there like that and it makes them into a slipper. So comfortable. Um, so that's what I've been knitting at night and just been loving it. 
like I said, it just takes two bo two balls, and you just do the one one foot, and you just do the other foot. I've got a really pretty, some really pretty bright colours. I love bright colours. And so, but I love the real um, heritage colours too, I guess you call it. And so, um, I've got some really beautiful purples and everything for my daughter and some of my daughter-in-laws. So, um, I'm just going to do other things. And then at night, some nights when I just don't feel like doing anything, I'll just pick up and make these for them. But that's what I've been knitting on there. Let me just put that back into my into my little knitting bag. But also, if those have followed me as well, I have been making some dishcloths. Um, I never realized how much I loved a homemade dishcloth. <laughs> I love the way it feels in my hands. I love after, where well, I rinse everything and wipe everything down. In the patriotic box, um, one of, the, one of the, the, the items that the people got was, was, a dishcloth as well that I had knitted one for everybody in patriotic colors and so um, I had been doing they come up really quick and I just love them so I've been making them I've stopped them as well but what I did do one day when I was in I can't remember if it was in Hobby Lobby or Joann's I think it was in might have been in Joann's with this one and I'll show you behind me I saw now my favorite color is green but I love red as well I just Red on me looks really good because of my blonde hair, but I love red in the kitchen. I've got red pots. <laughs> I like red sometimes a lot. And um, I was going, just walking through, wasn't intended on buying anything. And I thought, you know, I wouldn't mind trying to knit or crochet, because I can crochet too, a blanket, another little blanket. And I saw this wall and I was like, oh my gosh, that is going to be it. And so I've been, I bought lots of balls because they had it out like half price. And I've been winding these balls. And let me show you, I've got them, some of them in the basket behind me. See right there, see the red? <laughs> let me show you the, the colors that I picked and that I just love. Now, I can't decide if I should knit a mitered square blanket. And I don't know if you've ever seen them. If you haven't, look at these colors that I'm going to show you on my Instagram and flick through, swipe through, and then you'll see what a mitered square blanket looks like. And I thought they would look so pretty because you use two colors for one square. And I thought, oh my gosh, they look so pretty together. Or if I should do, and if you guys remember this, it has come back really big, a granny square crocheted blanket. <laughs> And I thought I could do mix these two like colors together as well. And I was like, oh, what shall I do? So I still haven't started them because I'm still winding the balls. And there's like, I don't know, 20 or maybe. <laughs> 20 of them i got to wind. But these are the colors. Let me just show you if I can get them. Oh. What's <laughs> many have I got here? Six. So there's six colors that's going to be in the blanket, whatever I decide I'm going to do. The first one is a white. Oh, the next one is a gray. <laughs> You're thinking, well, they're not very nice colors. <laughs> the next one is a red. The next one is a light gray. But this is what brings it all together, these two. <laughs> the gray and red and the red and white. I love these balls. <laughs> I love these colors. I don't know, it reminds me of, what do you call them? A, um, you know, your plaids and your, it's like in your fabric and stuff. And I just love them. I found some that are in blue as well and I bought them as well. But look at all these together. I've got to show you. Look, I can't pick them all up, but look at all these colors together. So the gray goes really beautiful with the red and gray and the white. And then if I pick up, oh, <laughs> I can't do it all. And if you pick up the white, it just brings it all together. And I've got the dark gray down there that I can't pick up. But so what shall I knit or what shall I crochet? Shall I do the mitered square blanket or shall I do the, the granny square crochet blanket? Help. <laughs> Because I can't make up my mind. I've been sitting there trying to think, I'm going to start this tonight. I don't know which one I want to do. <laughs> so I just pick up the slippers and start knitting the slippers. But I just love, especially these two colours. Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. 
that's why I like red. <laughs> I'm going to put this back. I found another two that I really love. And I don't know what I'm going to, well, not, not two, but one that I really love. And I bought like six balls with it. And I'm just going to wind this grey up before the kitten gets it and rips it apart. <laughs> it's not because it's hanging down. Um, I bought this and I really love this, you know, cream muted colour as well. It's green with the gold and the, and I really, because you know me and green's my favourite colour. And I bought, I think it was six of these that I'm winding that I don't know what I'm going to do with yet. <laughs> but yeah, so help me decide if I should do a mitre square, if I should do a Granny Smith, Granny Smith. <laughs> That's my favourite apple too, a Granny Smith apple. Granny squares. <laughs> I use a Granny Smith apple in my juices, in my smoothies. <laughs> That's why I like them. So, um, yeah, try to help me decide which one I should make. So that's another thing I've been up to at the moment, um, is trying to decide that. Now, I, like I said, I was going to um, pick up stuff that I wanted to work on, like, you know, things that I wanted to work on personally for myself and um, I had a few things that I was sitting there and I'm like, oh man, what do I, do I wanna, you know, start anything just new or just continue? And you know what we're like, sometimes we're just like, I gotta start something. But I've gotta show you these first that I found and I really liked. Now, this lady is called Simply, Simply Eileen and she's here in Springville, Utah and she's a crochet, crocheter crocheter <laughs> or a knitter and she comes out and she's got a really beautiful little um etsy shop and i'm thinking and she's on instagram and everything and if you want to look at her things now i saw these and i just thought they were adorable i couldn't help myself and i purchased this little pattern now she's made these little rainbow um coasters but you know what i want to do with these I want to use the pattern. I can't show you the whole pattern. I just can show you a little bit. See how she does it there. But I want to get some of that. I don't know if you guys ever seen the scrubby wool. And I want to make them for my pots to scrub my pots. <laughs> At least I can have a nice happy rainbow when I'm scrubbing my pots. <laughs> but she's got beautiful ones. She's got watermelons. And oh, I was just like, I want like, a few of them. But I don't really use coasters, to be totally honest. But when I saw them, I thought, man, that would just be the perfect size to, when you get that scrubby wool and use different colours and use it for your pots. So we'll see what happens. I'll let you know how that goes if I end up doing that or not. Um, also, when I back, went back to Australia, I showed you in one of my videos um, a whole bunch of supplies I brought back in my suitcases. And when I was going through one the other day, I was like... I couldn't believe I found this. I can't remember if I showed you in that video or not. This was probably the first thing I ever cross-stitched that I never finished. <laughs> I haven't done a lot of cross-stitching like from years ago. I've done more now, but not from years ago. But it was called the Crooked Collection Woolly Sheep. This is just a black and white. I haven't even got the coloured copper copy of this. I don't even know where I got this from. This is probably, I've probably had this 30, 35 years, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and this, when I found it, I was going through my box, is all that I've done with it. And it's done on 18, I think it's 18 count Ada. It might be 18 or 22 count Ada. I mostly stitch everything on linen now. But I'm not going to, I don't know if I'm going to finish this piece or start again because I really like it. I think I might like to have it like the, the cross stitching fabric or like they have it tea dyed or something but have a look you know how i love my sheep how cute is he plaid a little plaid sheep and then you got two more that's supposed to go there and i had started the face on this one i was just looking at it it's amazing when you look back at how you do things after 35 years <laughs> do you reckon i should finish it on this one and just go from there or do you reckon i should start all over again i just love him look at him a little plaid sheep 
So if you're interested in <laughs> that that pattern, I don't know if it's still around. I haven't even looked, but it is the Cricut Collection. What did I do with it? <laughs> it's in my hand here. The Cricut Collection Woolen Sheep, it's called. I think it's called Woolen Sheep. Yep. So if you need it and it's number 10. Oh my gosh, that's way back. All right. I just thought that was interesting. Let me, let me know if I should continue on with it on like that. Maybe I could just make it look a bit grungy after. But, um, or if I should start it again on a piece of linen. Okay. When I was going through, I have been stitching and I'm way behind. I've probably done two months of the, um, what's it called? Um, let me just think. called linen and lace linen and the sow the linen and lace sow is, it, is that what it's called um the free family one the free sow for 2020 is the family one the ones that do the uh, the, the fox and the rabbit from australia it's called linen and lace i can't remember it's not lakeside linen i know that much um yeah so i have been doing that and when i was just looking through you know different things like this i found this and my love of red again i found this free and it's a free cross stitch design by jan east eaton for tom pudding designs um i'm not going to do the middle one that says the lettering on it i'm just going to put a different one there but i just really like it i want to see how it comes about so if you're interested in this one i'm not going to do this one right here i'm going to probably come you know do different i don't want the writing i want it all just like a patchwork and it's all red and I've never done one just all red and I want to do one that's just all red <laughs> and so if you're interested in that like I said it's called Scandinavian red and white and that's probably because I've been watching a bit of um what are their name Arnie and Carlos who are knitters from are they from the Netherlands yeah I think they're from the Netherlands <laughs> Um, and so they'd be talking about all their Scandinavian patterns and the colours and everything. And I think it's kind of really attracted me. So if you're interested in that, that is, I don't even, I don't know if you're supposed to look up Jan Eaton or if you're supposed to look up Tom Pudding Designs. But it is a free cross-stitch design if you're interested. So we'll see what happens with that one. So that's what I'm into and looking at doing. And there's um, one that here that I bought and oh my gosh, it must be an old, really old pattern. I won't show you the whole lot, but it's like a booklet, look. I've never seen one this big. I can't, I'll show you the whole lot like this, because I'm gonna show you the inside, because that's the pattern. But it's called American Folk Art Boy Designs. Now I got this at my, um, were they West Mifflin, Pennsylvania? I don't know if they're still around or not. But I found this and I just loved it. It reminds me a little bit up on the New England area where my husband is from, up in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. It looks a little bit like Maine because it's got a lighthouse and a beachy area, but the church, the church and everything looks kind of like where he's from. And I found this at my secondhand shop for like, a dollar <laughs> and I was like man I'd really like to stitch this because it reminds me of where we were married we were married in Vermont and so um, I'd really like to stitch this and after I finish some of these there's no use for me keeping them I'll hand them on but look at this one how cute is this American folk art that's all it's called see doesn't this remind you of like Maine up here this, this church reminds me of where my husband's from it's just beautiful. Do you know, the other day we were talking about houses and everything and my husband and I got on the um, internet, of course, and looked up houses for sale in Vermont. If it wasn't so cold in the winter, I would move to back to Vermont. <laughs> That's where we got married. And the homes are just so homely. <laughs> homes are just so homely or down to earth or just so country 
um, all the white cladding, um, and that's so cheap. Oh my gosh, the homes here in Utah are getting prices like California prices, and they are getting so expensive. So that's why we haven't bought anything yet, because we're just like, we don't really know where we want to settle. And I looked at, we looked at some of these, and some of them on like lakes like this, um, let land, you know, anywhere from one to 10 acres of land, anywhere from 150 <laughs> to 300,000. I was just like, oh my gosh. Could I make it in the winter time? Now I talked to my mother-in-law and she hates it. <laughs> they live back in Vermont and she hates the winter times. Um, just because of that reason, because of the snow and the, you know, you get stuck not going anywhere. But when I look at the homes and how I could we could do one up, my husband is a, a builder, was a builder in the military. And so I think about how much it could be, how much fun it could be doing one up and, and stuff like that. And but Mm, that coldness just does it to me, I think. <laughs> we love log cabins and we would really love to have a log cabin home one day. Um, where? I'm not sure, but we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if you guys can get on eBay or on Amazon and find this. It's got Boyd Designs, American Folk Art. If you're interested, in it. I haven't looked to see if there's any more. But I'd, like I said, I got it for like a dollar or something at my secondhand shop. I really like that. And I think I want to do that sooner than later because I want to put it on our wall because it reminds me, reminds us of, reminds me of our marriage and um, being back in Vermont. Okay, so those are the things that I would like to stitch on in the future. I have got probably a hundred of them that I'd like to stitch on in the future. Um, and these are some of the other two that I would really like. Now, I just want to thank everyone for their love and support during this difficult time that I have been going through, not with just the COVID, but with my family and losing, losing um, two members of my family that I love and my father being sick. And I have received some stitchy kindness throughout the last few months. Um, when we were doing the common threaded stitcher, I had received something, uh, a couple of things from some wonderful people. Sorry, another message. And, um, and just recently, um, I had received a really cute little gift from someone as well. So I just want to show you what Mary had sent me. Um, that I, she knows I love my Santas and I had mentioned it to, mentioned it on my common threaded stitcher and it turned up in the mail. I just love that Santa because of the garden and the bird. I think that might be have to be one of the next ones too, after the last two, the, the other two that I have to finish. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. I'm going to start this after I finish the other hundred that I've got to do. <laughs> also, I'm very grateful for Oliver, who um, heard me say that my unicorn chart last year <laughs> um, on the common thread of stitcher he heard me say that and i mentioned it again this year that one of my unicorn charts um not probably that i couldn't get it but just i hadn't purchased it yet was from the fox and rabbit designs their australian couple couple and it was the botany bay sampler now oliver i am so grateful i love this pattern and i am going to start it so i thought well Oliver sent it, sent, sent it to me. He works for Fire Poppies. Now, um, I'm not quite sure where Fire Poppies is. Let me have a look here. I've got a card. Where is it, Oliver? I don't even know. Don't even say on the card. But Oliver works for the store called Fire Poppies, which is somewhere back on the East Coast, I'm sure. And he heard me say that I really wanted to get this, this pattern. And... It arrived in the mail and it was just so sweet, sweet of him and I'm really grateful for for Mary and Oliver for sending these to me and I really, really appreciate it. They're sweet arts. So why I wanted to do this one, I thought, how about if I did this one from where Patrick and we were married and then I have this one from where I'm from in Australia. <laughs> A little bit of history in that. So the Botany Bay Sampler, um, I want to wanna get done and this one as well so when i try and stitch things other than my santas i try and stitch things that i really like 
have a meaning of a place that I've been or, or, you know, things that I love like pumpkins or, you know, I just don't stitch everything in anything. I just, I kind of a little bit picky, but I love things that have a meaning that later on when I'm not in this life and then maybe these get handed down to my daughter, she can remember them, be stitching on these. So they're the little stitchy goodies that I received. And the other, the other one that I received was from Kim. Now I've got this really nice card from Kim. Thank you so much, Kim. And she sent me this really cute beaded. And I have never attempted beading in my life. And I don't know if I ever will. <laughs> I can't take on something else. <laughs> um, this really cute little beaded sleigh. Sled? <laughs> Is that what you say? We don't have sleighs or sled sleds from where I'm from. So it's like I have my hair on it. Um, she sent me this really cute little beaded sleigh saying that she was thinking of me during my difficult times a lot of love from my heart kim much much appreciated and it hangs on a little um hook up on my wall that i have like a little shelf and i have it sitting there it doesn't go away for christmas it sits there all the time so i'm very grateful for the stitchy kindness of those that were thinking of me now anything else did i buy, buy any other supplies no, I don't think I do. Let me just check my little notes here. Mm, no. So, the next thing I have come to decided that I want to talk about is back in my uh, floss tube video, I think this one would be, it's going to be number 23 or 24, but in floss tube number 19 and number 20, when I actually was doing floss tube and not just things about my gardening or cooking because I was not, in the right mind to be able to make a floss tube um i had some giveaway winners uh, some giveaway prizes i should say and i just want to announce the winners to those so in floss tube number 19 is it 19 yes 19 was first i think <laughs> this is the number 19 one first i think um i put it i put all the names into the YouTube, com the common picker, the random picker, <laughs> and um, the winners came up. So the first one was for, this was for, I think this was for floss tube number 19. If it wasn't for 20, just sw switch them around. It was either 19 or 20, because there's one for both of them. Um, for this one, there was the, the folding sewing kit, if you guys remember. And then it was the chicken pattern that I had purchased but will probably never ever stitch myself so i'm going to give it away as a prize um it was one of my little buzzy bee needle minders and um the winner might have to put these in the garden next year <laughs> i think it might be a bit too late but the three packets of seeds they'll be fine absolutely for next year and when i did the random uh, picker the winner for that giveaway was enola tullis Okay, Enola, congratulations on winning these this little gift pack prize here that I just said. Um, I do have your um, I do have your address, but Enola, can you just um, email me and I'll leave the, my email in the link below. But it will be Cricklewood Crossing at Gmail. <laughs> it's quite easy, and um, just let me know that you've seen this video. And that you know it's coming and i will send it to you because you'll probably receive it in the mail and think what is this is all about if you don't see the video um so if you can just let me know you've seen the video and then when you do i'll ship it off to you asap now in video number 20 so if that was 19 and this is 20 could be the other way this one could be could have been 19 and the other one could have been 20. i can't remember um i had another giveaway <clears throat> i am really behind on things aren't i so hopefully things can pick up and I can get quite a few more videos and things done. So in the next um, floss tube, which was floss tube number 20, I had another giveaway. And this one, okay, yeah, this one, this one was floss tube number 20 because now I remember. Because that number floss tube uh, 20 was a tribute to my friend Cheryl who worked at the garden nursery with me. And if you had watched that, um, I was potting up some uh, copper pots that she had picked out the arrangements for a wedding previous but when um, Cheryl passed away of breast cancer at the age of 40 just in November this year just after I had lost my mother Cheryl being a good friend she um, 
I did this video in honor of her because I was potting up these pots in the same color range that she had done as well. And so I did a little giveaway that was kind of like a gardening giveaway as well for um, in honor of her. So in that, that little giveaway was, um, that's a wrap. I don't know if you remember this. There's this, this little company is called Pine Mountain Designs and they are here in Utah. And if you want to go ahead, they got some of the cutest little things on their website. So if you want to look at Pine Mountain Designs, this is a little kit and it comes with um, the design. It comes all made up into like a, the cushion and you just got to stitch the inside, the buttons, everything. So that was part of the giveaway. Then there was two colour and cotton threads that were that could, you could use into that design. And then there was one of my little gardening, cottage gardening, when I had my first mystery box that they got was this little needle minder. So this was in this giveaway. So this was in for Floss Tube video number 20. And the winner of this prize um, is Sandra Stitches. Now I'm pretty sure Sandra <laughs> lives in Australia. So I'll get this off to you, Sandra. If you can just send me, I know you've just moved. So if you can get this to me in, um, get my, give me your address, just email me under Cricklewood Crossing um, at gmail.com. The link will be below and send me your email, not your email, your address through email, um, both years, and I'll get these off to you. Um, so those are the giveaways. I'm sorry they have been so long. I will get them mailed out to you. Now I was going to have the drawer, not thinking straight, for the, the pe people that had purchased the mystery box, I was gonna have the drawer for the $30 gift card. And I forgot to actually do that in the, in the, in the not the random picker, but as a, as a drawer, I was have, gonna have to write all the names in and do it. I forgot to do it. So I will do it in the, this next week and I'll let everyone know what it is on a video here and then also in my Instagram. But, there's one thing with everything that I've been through, because like you said, my mother died in October. I was there until December, came back and had Christmas with my family. And then um, my, my, my son's girlfriend at the time, well, after she got out here <laughs> again, ex-girlfriend. Okay, my son had been dating a girl when, she was, when they were 16 in high school. And when we moved out here, they had kind of broken up and everything and he had been dating someone else and stuff. And so when we went back for my mum's funeral, she, um, they got back kind of just talking, nothing else. And they arranged for her to come out for another little holiday. She came out in January, no, end of December to February 4th. And um, they kind of started dating again and got really close. Now I've got to tell you a funny story. Everyone laughs and says, you're not angry or anything, but um, she left. I think it was February 4th to go back to Australia. And when they, when they were here, they did like a 12 day trip to California. They did a four day trip to Las Vegas. They did some little trips around here and we did some sledding together and everything. And then when she had gone back, our, it was like a week or two and our son, it was three weeks or something, and our son had called, called us over to his house. My husband and I says, I got something to tell you guys. I don't know how you guys will react, but when we went to Las Vegas, we got married. <laughs> That sounds exactly like my son. If you knew my son, my youngest son, he's got the biggest heart of anything. <laughs> he is so funny. And they got married. So they'd been married for three weeks without anyone knowing. <laughs> and I just, and she'd gone home and told her parents. And we just thought it was hilarious. And everyone's like, you know, don't, aren't you, sorry, aren't you angry? Like, aren't you angry that, and we're like, no, we're not. I'm a, I've got a daughter-in-law. <laughs> it's quite funny. But, um, so because we were a military family and we've always told our kids and we've always traveled and done so much, you know, around the countries and stuff. And we've always said to our kids, you know, travel and enjoy your life and do that if you can before you get married or whatever. And, you know, when you decide to get married, go get married really quick and then use the all the money that you would on a wedding. <laughs> use it on um, a honeymoon somewhere together because it's, it's about you two. And so they literally did that. They went to Las Vegas and got married. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, um, well, what was I going to say? And then they told us. And so we're quite happy for them. So anyway, but the saddest thing is, so that was in February the 4th, and then the COVID hit. 
<laughs> so they put all this paperwork in for the immigration for her to move out here with us and um it's been sitting in the immigration office that's been closed down for what a few months now <laughs> three months or something four months because of the COVID and he just got an email like two weeks ago saying they've just opened up the offices and they're starting to process all the paperwork so she has been all this time in Australia waiting to come back over and he's been here waiting for her to come back over so it's been a tough time for them and um, it just reminds me of my husband and myself when we were in the military and the first um, few months of our life, like we were married for four months, he was gone for seven and a half, he come back for another four and then went, went for like another eight. Um, so we were separated quite a lot when we were first married. So I know we know what it feels like, but it's it's been hard for him. So we just can't wait for dear Caitlin to come out and join with us. So um, that's our little story of our son and his little Las Vegas wedding. <laughs> anyway, so we're, um, we're, really excited for her to have her in our family anyway so what i will do now and i was thinking about oh what why i was leading up to that i'm like why was i leading up to that the reason i was leading up to that is because she came out i was telling you at the end of december and you know in january they were here and we were doing things together and then the covid hit and then i got sick and it's just snowballed well i realized probably I think it was back in end of March or beginning of April that I had a one year floss tube anniversary. <laughs> it was supposed to be in January the 26th um, was my one year floss tube anniversary and I never did. I wanted to do a really cute little giveaway or something for my one year and I never got a chance to do it. So I'm doing it now. Better late than ever, right? <laughs> so what I've decided to do is um, Anyone that wants to be in on this, you can just say, um, what can be the, the key word? Happy anniversary or anniversary, <laughs> I guess. Um, and the prize is going to be, um, you can choose from one of the last three of the mystery boxes. So if you win this prize for my one year anniversary, you will be able to have one of my mystery boxes. You can either choose from the Halloween, the fall or the Christmas mystery box. Now I'm hoping, um, because my Halloween one is gonna get released on Saturday. Um, if I draw this the same, like next week, when I draw the gift card um, for the mystery boxes so i'll do them both at the same time you can either choose a halloween the fall or the the christmas mystery box for my one year anniversary gift to you guys so um best of luck i hope you guys get in for it you know the, all the rules about it i don't want to say it just put somewhere in your little comments um happy one year anniversary or floss tube anniversary or something like that um and i'm sure um well, that'll all work out. So best of luck. I hope that that will be something fun for someone. Um, and I will enjoy doing every little bit in for, in for those boxes for you. So I think that is all I have for you at the moment. I can't believe I've talked this long. Well, yes, I can. I can always talk this long. But I am grateful to be back and be with you guys. I have missed everyone. I am so excited, looking forward to the rest of the year and hoping that things can open up. I am just watched um, Deb, and, uh, Deb and Steph's, not Deb and Steph's, Deb and Kef's <laughs> um, Snug Harbour Crafts Floss Tube about Stitch West and I'm all in on it. I would like to, to go to it if they're still gonna have it at the end of the year sometime. If not, then maybe I'll meet a lot of yous uh, for the first time in um, StitchCon in 2021. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'll probably be going maybe hopefully if we can get in sometime the first week I don't, I'm not sure what's gonna happen if not I'll just be happy to get in anytime <laughs> to be totally honest it'll be my first retreat um, if I don't get to get to, to a stitch west one we'll see what happens this COVID's really threw everyone out has, hasn't it but so in this time just keep safe everyone and I'm thinking about you and look after yourself look after your family and just just be happy in your stitching and I'll talk to you later bye okay I said to you that I might do this little video at the end of the, my main floss tube about how my garden has been grown. 
the poor American flag here has got stuck, so let me just straighten him out. <laughs> there we go. So right down here I had my clematis. I haven't got any flowers, but it's growing really nice. And then down in the middle here I had that I planted the rosemary. And then up here I had a little birdhouse last year hanging up here. And as you can see, it's got some paper stuck over the hole because when we went to take it down last year, we were wondering why we had so many wasps around. <laughs> we had a little nest of wasps in there. So then we come around this way. I've got some lunch for myself. Oh, let me show you this. This is one of my favorite drinks. So if anyone is into healthy drinks, it's called Organic Dr. D Sparkling Probiotic Drink Crisp Apple. Oh my gosh, I love this stuff. It is so yummy and so refreshing because it's the apple flavor. So I drink quite a bit of that. That helps me with my stomach. So then I planted my herbs along here. They're doing really well. We had a bit of uh, really tough weather. We had a lot of winds and then we had um, really, really hot, like 93, 95 and up. And then we had really freezing cold again. So they were struggling a little bit. Down underneath here, I just planted in some petunias just to fill in that space down there, the purple petunias. So here's my tomato bush. He's growing pretty high and he's doing really well. He's actually got, he got kind of knocked about a bit, but look, I've got lots of little flowers coming there and there. On the bottom, I planted a, a basil plant. And then this is the one that suffered the most. I had a red pepper plant. It's starting to reshoot again, but when the wind came through, it knocked it, knocked it around a real lot. And here, I've been eating these a lot in my salads. There's my little row of lettuces, which is a romaine lettuce. Now over here, I haven't been out for a little bit except when I went to water but I need to really cut this off this dead shoot um, I just noticed it but my husband's got this shears locked in the, the garden like the little shed here and it's in some buckets that I need to get him to to uh, lift up so I can get the shears out I noticed a little bit earlier that I've got it looks like a few little aphids there that I need to spray um, I, when I had my organic farm I used to keep my roses really well with um, garlic spray or plant garlics around my roses I've got this cute little bunny from Hobby Lobby really cheap for like two dollars and then behind here I have been eating a few strawberries off my vines and they're just starting to kind of really take off now this one underneath hiding under here and then my lavender is doing beautiful. So it was happy with the transplant, which a lot of times lavenders don't like. And I just love the smell of lavender. And then right here is my husband's favorite marigolds. For some reason, this one's struggling, but I think it's because the wind comes across here and it just really damaged them. So there's those little pretty yellow marigolds and my roses have got some buds on them even though it's struggling a bit and they are yellow as well. So I'll come back around here and this is where I often sit, might do some reading. It might be just a little tiny space guys, but I want to let you know that how much you can grow just in a little tiny balcony. And this is where I'm going to have my lunch. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hello everyone. I just thought I'd show you this little video that we're doing, my husband and myself. We let you, you know that we live in an apartment building and so space is limited. And so he's done a few things for me to be able to have in our little apartment. As you can see over there, um, with my new embroidering machine, I've got my embroidery thread right there. And he made this really cute little planter uh, hanger for myself, uh, for me. And then also we have a lot of these um, square storage boxes so we can store things. Now at the moment, this is his desk but I've been taking it up with my sewing machine and I feel really bad because I have this table here um, for my cross stitching and my computer and everything. So you can see I've got things everywhere around and especially here under our bench for our, um, where we eat or our kitchen, 
this is the place where I normally iron or cut out things for my, my bags and my quilting and stuff. So this down here is a whole bunch of extra boxes and storage and it's starting to look a little bit messy. So we've came up with this idea and Patrick's going to build it for me and I will show you what it looks like at the end and how hopefully it'll clean a whole bunch of this area up. Talk to you soon. Hello everyone, I just thought I'd show you um, how Patrick ended up making me a, a cute little sewing table, costing us next to nothing, probably about $60, maybe $70, and that could fit perfectly in our little apartment and clean some things up. So this was what I showed you before, and um, how I have my threads and, and my little computer table. I just didn't want to put my sewing machine on the my computer table because I often work at my bench here to cut things out. So this is what he ended up making for me, which worked out perfect because it gave me four more baskets to add storage, which is probably not good because I have a few of them bulging in lots of fabric. So anyway, <laughs> so this is what, what he did for me. Okay, so as you can see, um, he got a little four cube uh, cupboard so I can put some more drawers in and cleaned it up completely. So this is, like I said, where I normally cut out my stuff. And so this is what he's done for my little table. Okay, go ahead, honey. So he's just, you just pull it out. Oop. Okay, so then he just pulled the white, the little white, um, what do you, like top, like shelf or top out, and he made me some legs. Do you wanna just pick up that for me, sweet, for a second? I just want to show him the legs. So let me just pick up this. We dropped the side of this. So, so I just want to show you he just made some little legs. Got a piece of board for me. Made some little legs. And now I can have my sewing machine right here. I'll probably make a little cushion for my stool. And it's right there where I cut out and iron and do everything for my little business. How perfect is that? And I'll show you what it looks like now when he puts it back away again. So simple and easy. Hasn't that cleaned it up perfectly? And so even down the side here, on the side right down by the legs where he's got it, we've left a space so I can put my, my cutting boards and my um, rulers. So that's our little quick and easy sewing table. Thanks, honey. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.